modern submarine. Silent. Secretive. Lethal. Submarines dominate the oceans of the world. But there's one type of submarine few people know about. They've been around since before the First World War. Most NATO countries use them. They're considered a strategic threat around the world. Stealth diesel electric submarines. They're the hunter-killer class of subs. Fire. The people who crew these submarines are the best of the best. Weapons operating correctly. They're among the Navy's elite sailors. Submariners. in Norway, one of the most idyllic ports in Europe. People come from around the globe to drink in her old world charm, culture, and Scandinavian beauty. This is a place of rest and relaxation. These are crew from Her Majesty's Canadian Submarine Corner Brook there on a short bit of shore leave before heading back to sea, back to training for war. The diesel electric submarine, HMCS Cornerbrook, has come to Norway to test its skills. Basically, coil it here. I want you down here, Mary. To train its crew. As Corner Brook departs from Bergen and plows through the icy cold waters of Norway, the crew takes in the fresh air before it's gone. For the next 10 days, they'll be sealed below deck in tight quarters, with few showers and little fresh air. Once at sea, preparations are made to dive. The first dive. Course north, speed 20 knots. The tension is palpable. And uh, we'll be clear for diving uh, shortly, that is all. That was the merch? Yeah. Very now, sir. Everyone is extremely focused. Every dial, every valve, every sensor. Everything is monitored and checked to ensure there are no problems. One arm around that. Problems during the dive can be fatal. Conning tower, upper lift right. But all is well. It's a good sub with a professional crew. Once the submarine has been safely secured for sea, it's time to get down to business. There are many types of submarines in today's modern navies. They can be classed into four major categories. SSBNs are ballistic missile submarines. They're an important tool in nuclear defense and deterrence. These huge submarines carry a deadly payload of strategic missiles. Missiles such as the Trident II SLBM. SSGNs are the same size as SSBNs, except they carry a different payload. In the US Navy, they carry the Tomahawk land attack missile, which is used for surgical strikes on land targets. SSNs 
are nuclear-powered attack submarines. These multi-capable subs have a central purpose, to attack shipping and hunt other submarines. SSKs are diesel electric-powered submarines, much smaller in size than their nuclear cousins. They're prized because of their stealth and lethality. SSKs are the only non-nuclear submarines around. Navies such as the USN and Royal Navy have abandoned this type of sub in favor of nuclear power. Yet most Western navies, such as the Netherlands, Australia, Germany, and Canada, have maintained a strong fleet of these submarines. One of the best is the Canadian Victoria class. Originally built as the upholder class for the Royal Navy, they were recently purchased by Canada to replace her aging fleet of Oberon subs. The Victoria class has proven to be a very deadly and effective submarine. It's all about stealth. On board this Canadian submarine are a number of exchange officers from other nations that have diesel electric submarines. When we return, as the submarine glides through the cold darkness of the Norwegian fjords, above, there are people hunting them. It's all part of the dangerous training. Precision, stealth, these are the basic principles of intelligence gathering. Like snipers on a battlefield, submariners are far more than shooters. They're one of the best platforms for gathering intelligence. They sneak in, take photos, video, even deploy special forces troops. But it takes skill and an enormous amount of teamwork. They have to be good, because often, they are the hunted. In wartime or special operations, ships and aircraft are a submarine's number one enemy. So every submarine crew practices stealth and evasion constantly, trying to remain undetected. It's key to their survival. For the junior officers, it's one of their biggest challenges, making the right tactical decisions to evade enemy detection. Even though this is only an exercise, the stakes are very real. We have ferry traffic, transit time. This is the ultimate game of chess. Check the Vic and... Lieutenant Commander Alex Koyman is an experienced and knowledgeable submariner. He recently spent two years on exchange with the Dutch submarine force. Koyman is a junior officer with high hopes to command his own sub. Today, he is tested. A menacing helicopter keeps coming in and out of range. Down. I'm visual during that all around look. Koyman takes command to gather intelligence on a ship. He needs to get in close but he must remain undetected. Five down. We're not even had a good grip on him now. Secure this event. Let's walk back. Let's look at the lessons learned from this. And let's get ready for the next opportunity. Roger. After the failed intelligence gathering, Koyman is given a debrief by the captain and Commander Cassivi. The goal is to help him learn. React to what you see. You know, I looked at it. I saw two white lights. Looked like a 15 starboard. Right, which sold you the path I, I, it was starboard, but what, what were the next words out of my mouth? A lot of people on the forward periscope keeping it up, telling me to keep it up, putting it down. It, it, it disrupts the flow of the attack. Did you look out the attack periscope and all that? 
I, I, I did switch the attack periscope. And did you see why I was looking at the search periscope very quickly? Visibility is, is less through the attack periscope. Significant. But when, when you, you, okay. You'd have to fight through it. Okay, okay gotta fight short. Uh, Captain's gotta be happy with the safety. Okay, and when the picture gets confusing, so I said, we'll try to get a look to be able to point you in the path and try to rectify the, the confusion. Okay, there's a vessel out there, unless there's anything else. Let's go have a look, let's take positive charge, and let's uh, perform this one better. All right, okay, go. We know less about the ocean than we do about space. A submarine is an immensely complicated vessel that must operate in an incredibly hostile environment with as many mechanical parts as a NASA space shuttle. Keeping the thousands of parts working properly is the job of the engineering officer. Lieutenant Tony March has the responsibility of keeping everything working. It's a big job. He understands how the corner brook functions this is the engine room of the Cornerbrook. This is where the electrical power is generated for the propulsion system. We have two Paxman Valenta 16-cylinder diesel engines. They're modified locomotive engines, and they each make around 2,000 horsepower. They produce DC electrical power, which is then supplied to the submarine main battery and propulsion system. Operating in one of the harshest environments on Earth, Every submariner has to be familiar with literally hundreds of valves that may be critical to submarine safety, such as this emergency blow control valve, which will put high pressure air into the main ballast tanks and surface the submarine in an emergency. The lifeblood of any diesel electric submarine, the main battery supplies all the electrical power on board. It consists of Two batteries, each with 240 cells, that are not unlike a lead-acid battery in your car. However, each one of these weighs over 500 kilograms. Life in a submarine is very different from that of a ship. It's all about space. How little you have, how much you have to share. <clears throat> Submarines are definitely not for the claustrophobic. Leading seaman Jules Stahl is used to these living spaces and how palatial they are. Welcome to the submarine bathroom. It has all the amenities of home. It has our toilet located aft, our garbage can, our own shower fitted with our own sink, and two sinks outside. From time to time, when we have enough water on board, we're allowed to shower. Now, a four minute shower takes 20 minutes because you have to ensure the space is totally dry before you can leave. Now, if you follow me, we'll continue on to my where I sleep. Well, here's my bunk. It's not much space, but I call it home. As you can see, I've got about an inch in front of my face. But luckily, when I close my eyes, I don't see much. Bunks are tucked anywhere they fit on a sub, even behind torpedo firing zones. Stand by to fire, two tube, attract seven one. Tactical. Coming up next. Now to so take the pictures early and start to egress out. Submarines at war. Leaving uh, track zero two, journalist. Seconds. Fire! Fire! Early and start to egress out, leaving uh, track zero two. Sternless. Bent. 
This is the acronym for Basic Intelligence Gathering Mission. Gathering intelligence is a key function of submarines. Learning about ships, aircraft, military installations, even lighthouses. Commander Kasivi knows how important submarines are for intelligence gathering and why they're such valuable strategic weapons. It's about surveillance. We have a large territory of waters of interest in Canada. Uh, all national waters are EZ, goes out there where a lot of activities are taking place, some legal and some illegal. It's about deterrence. It is, it, it's, it's a platform, and it's, it, it's a tool that brings your enemy to think twice about how they're gonna employ, the, uh, employ their force and what risk they're willing to take. Lieutenant Commander Rael Fortin has a wealth of submarine experience. He's just returned from a two-year exchange on Australian submarines. Like others in his place, he's keen, ambitious, eager to take command. But tonight, he has a problem. No attack. Handles going A maritime long-range patrol aircraft is hunting him down as he tries to gather intelligence on a nearby lighthouse. Sonar boys have been dropped all around the submarine. High-frequency squeals are used to bounce off the sides of the sub, giving away their secret location. But the submariners are clever. They know how to use the sea to hide. Recovery. That's it. Last eight alpha, sea state two standard. It's up to 410 to prove he can tactically evade the aircraft that hunts them. Well, here we have one contact further. And Head revolutions 4-5. He uses the passive sonar that is arranged in the flanks of the submarine or in its towed tail to help detect and evade the enemy. Get my all on look, raise attack all on look. Down. Somebody turn the heat up in here. Raise attack. Two pictures of Burma showing. Should be. Be. Take. Take. Okay, disengage. Down. All right, team, we managed to uh, get the two takes. In addition, we got one more take as the Utsara Lighthouse was opening up. Success. They have evaded Sono boys dropped by the aircraft and simultaneously gathered covert photographs of installations. ultimate naval firing power. Torpedoes. The greatest threat a submarine poses to enemy forces is their ability to sink ships and submarines. During World War II, England experienced food shortages, largely because German subs were destroying Allied shipping vessels. During the Cold War, the Russians realized the sub's strategic value and then went on to build an enormous fleet of submarines. Today, submarines remain critical to a nation's defense. Stand by to fire, two tube, attract seven one, tactic five. Stand by to fire, two tube. Every nation in NATO has submarines. WC, ship control, fire and salvo water shot from Green 6 2. Should HMCS Cornerbrook ever have to fire a torpedo in anger, this is what it would look fire, like. Fire! Every submariner hopes this will never have to be.
Submariners are tough. It's not easy living in cramped quarters, being submerged for weeks at a time, working in an environment of stress that. and exactness. But those who do it love it, love the precision and striving for perfection. The reason I joined submarines in the first place is because it's always been, I consider, the elite of the Navy. Um, in the same way that to what the Marines is to the American soldier equivalent, we are to the Navy. Um, it's always been where, you know, the best of the best go, as far as, you know, so it's always been something um, more of a challenge and something better to strive for. Stealth submarines and the people who serve in them are special. This is no ordinary military job. You have to have a passion. There's no uh, black and white. You either love it or you try something else. So the people that are here and sail tend to have a great passion for what they do. I guess uh, if there's something that symbolizes uh, who we are and what we do, the dolphins, which is uh, the emblem that we wear, we all have it on our uniforms, is probably uh, one thing that stands out. Uh, we're very proud to wear our dolphins, and any country you go to where there are dolphin wearers, that's a common bond that we, we all share. Diesel electric submarines, the silent hunter killers of the ocean.